Thank you for tuning in to Rayleigh's Small Engines. Today we're working on a Toro Zero Turn. It's not in too bad a shape. Uh, the customer complaint is runs only on choke. And what we're going to do is show you how to quickly diagnose this. Now, i got to show you one more thing. This front tire, I want you to look at this thing. Now, let's show you why. <laughs> Uh, we have no bearings left. Look at that. They're gone. <laughs> anyway, stand by. Let me set you up and we'll show you how to diagnose this. Okay. Let's pull this seat up out the way. Now, I've already diagnosed this just to save time on the video for you, but I'm going to tell you exactly the steps I took. First thing, I pop the cover up, remove the air filter, and it is flips out got my hand on the way the camera didn't know then you're going to find there's six bolts around this engine cover and all you have to do is loosen them you loosen them sorry and you don't even have to take them out and then this cover will lift off something to be careful of these toros have a oil drain here um get you some pliers and turn this because if you don't, can you see this nipple down here? Um, they are bad about breaking off, so be very, very careful with that. Uh, if it does happen to break off on you, you can just stick a bolt and a clamp in there, and you'll be fine. So let me pull this engine cover, and I'll be right back with you. As I said, it just lifts off. First thing I wanted to do, runs only on choke, tells me we've got good fire. We've obviously got good compression. First thing I wanted to address is a fuel issue because if you pull it on choke, you're sucking more fuel in. So the first thing I did was look down here at the bottom of the carburetor. There is a bolt right there on the bottom of that bowl. Now all you have to do is loosen that bolt up, pull it out, and the fuel will run out. Make sure your muffler is not hot because it's going to drain directly on it. And what you want to watch for when it drains, and I've already done this and there's no fuel left, there is, you're looking for water droplets and it'll be easy to see. And that's what we found in this case. Um, let's see if I can zoom you in a little closer. You can probably see there's some little jelly pieces. And if you look, if you look right there, See the water? That's still there. The gas evaporated. There was another spot somewhere. Yep, see right there? Now, when you see that water, that tells you you need to drain the carburetor, flush the fuel system, replace the fuel filter, and drain that fuel tank and get all that water out of there, and I'll show you how to do that. The next thing I did, I pulled this gas cap off throw it over there and I looked down inside and I'm going to see if I can get this camera to show this up if you look down in there at the fuel level to the upper left down in the bottom you'll see a little line that goes in a swirl there that is the edge of the water down at the bottom of this fuel tank stand by and I'll show you how to get that out well, this is what I'm going to use. Uh, I made it out of PVC pipe. There is a video on this with a couple of fails using some buckets. But that's PVC pipe, a little drain faucet, and you can use this one for gas or oil. You can stick the tube down in the crankcase. I used an old uh, air vacuum pump from Mac Tools that I've had for 30 years. I saw you could buy these uh, air vacuums and all you do is hook your air hose up to the nipple right there and it'll suck it all out. You don't have to worry about gas, oil, or anything. Um, the other option is you can remove this fuel tank. Now, you can remove the fuel tank. You've got some uh, torque screws here. There's one there, one here, and I think there's one more down in the front. But you can do that, pull this cover off, and then you can lift the fuel tank out and get it completely drained, and then take a rag and a long screwdriver, 
go down in there and wipe everything around until you get it all out uh, and get it very clean. Replace this fuel filter. Be sure that when you hook this back up, put fuel in, disconnect your fuel line to the carburetor, place it in a jug, and then crank the engine over to make sure you flush fresh gas through. That way you have nothing left in that fuel pump of water that could be settling in the bottom of that fuel pump. But add some fresh gas to the tank after you have cleaned that water out. And then run this into a jug so that you can take that to the recycle place. You don't want to dispose of that in the wrong way. But get all that fuel out, drain that carburetor, and try it. And if it still gives you a fit, then you'll have to pull the carburetor. But if you get this water out nine times out of ten, just water, it'll work itself through once you clean all this out, and you'll be good to go. Okay, so we just cleaned this tank out. I'll put a link in the description. I think that uh, Harbor Freight sells an oil extractor that you can buy. I'll try to put a link down in the description for that. We went ahead and put the new fuel filter on. And you'll see that it is uh, directional and that way you can see if there gets water and trash in the filter I also date them I put July 21 on there and if it has an hour meter I write that on the filter also I do the same thing when I'm changing oil and I generally know if it's a machine I've worked on or not before because of the way I just got a certain way I do things and I'll know but we have pulled the fuel line off of the carburetor we're going to run a little bit of gas through there. I'll show you. These are the fuel filters that I use. 10352 fuel filter. It says for Kawasaki, but I use them on everything. I don't care what it is. Uh, if it is a Ryder, uh, uh, Kawasaki, Kohler, Briggs, I don't care. I put it on all of them. All right, so I popped this cover back on. We should be good to go. Keep in mind, guys... Um, you're gonna have to crank it over for a little bit before it will start because you're gonna have the fuel pump is gonna have to pump and get that gas to fill up the bowl of the carburetor before it'll start. So you'll just crank it over a little bit and then you know she will fire up. Now this one I went ahead and cranked it over just so you know and here we go. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Rayleigh's Small Engines. If you haven't subscribed, think about clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And hope this helps you guys out and y'all have a wonderful day. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Take care, guys and gals.